So this is the tutorial for part one of module three. And we're going to be getting the settings for the sample assessment that is possible for doing a test. So under module three, let's go ahead and add an item and we'll pick add assessment. And let's say we're doing the final exam. Right. And if you remember from the last module, uh, next week in class we have the students working on their review and we're going to have the test on the 28th. So I don't want this assignment to be available until 11 o'clock on the 28th. And class ends at 12.15 so they need to be done by 12.15 p.m. So that sets the time for them to complete the test. And we don't want them to be having access to the test in review mode. So we'll keep that setting on never. Now, I want to make sure that the students aren't taking this test at home. So I'm going to have a password that I only enter for the students in class. And you can set that password to be whatever you want. Toiler. Okay, we're going to set a time limit for the student for 75 minutes and make sure that they don't extend that. Uh, the assignment will be available until 12.15, but if they open it before that, it won't necessarily kick them out. So let's set that 75 minute time limit and kick the student out at the time limit. The display method we're going to use is full test, submit one at a time. You can do full test at once and the problem with this is if it freezes up for some reason any of the answers that they have sort of put in the boxes will be lost and erased. Whereas if they're submitting them one at a time they can do them in any order um, but this way they don't lose their progress and have to re-enter a bunch of answers. Some students still like full test at once, and that's obviously up to you whether you want to use that um, because they like to double check everything at the end before they hit submit. Um, just tell students to do that uh, with the submit one at a time. Don't hit submit any of the questions until they are double check them. So we're going to leave it on full test submit one at a time. You can play around with that and see how it's different. I've shown some of the feedback for these two display methods on those documents in the main page. So check those out. All right, only one attempt because it's a test and it doesn't matter what the penalty is because we're only having one attempt. Uh, the feedback, we want to show score on each question at the end of the test. So that way as as they're submitting these questions, they don't see whether they're right or wrong until the test is over. Um, otherwise, the incorrect feedback might get discouraging. So they don't know how well they're doing until the end. And at the end, I don't want them to get access to the answers because that's confidential. So um, they can review their own answers at the end of the test, but we won't show them the correct answer. You'll have access to it, so if you want to meet with a student and share that information, you still can. Uh, you want to make sure that anytime there's questions that have video or hints, you don't want to have those. So I'd say uncheck this box in case you happen to pick some questions that have videos. We don't want to allow the use of any late passes, so select none for late passes. And we're going to shuffle the order of the questions so they don't just go from memory and let's assign this to the gradebook category of final because it's our final exam and we are going to count that in the gradebook of course and let's go ahead and put it in the calendar final exam All right. and those settings should be sufficient for what we've done so we're going to go ahead and hit create assessment and we've now set up the assignment settings for our proctored in a computer lab final exam. Now, 
In the remaining parts, we're going to see how to put some questions in here and try modifying and even creating them from scratch. So join me in parts two and three for that.